one of the most important conversations that is being held in different summits across the world is the conversation on food security. It's very sad that in this day and age, we still do have millions of people across the world dying of hunger, yet right in Africa, we do boast of having absolutely great soils and good weather that does favor agriculture. Now, if we brought it br back home, talking about our farmers right here in Kenya, according to insights from AFEX 2020-2024, it does show that only 50% of our small-scale farmers are food secure. Now, these are the ones that are able to sustain themselves with enough nutritious food all year round. 21% face mild food insecurity and 12% suffer from completely food insecurity. Now, of course, there are very many factors that lead to food insecurity as we have learned right here on the show. And that's why Kenya's Gold is here to learn more and explore more on how we can deal with the challenges of food security, of course, with the help of our farmers and our experts. Very many thanks for joining us from wherever it is that you are watching us from. We do have an absolutely brilliant show lined up for you today. My name is Violeta Angina. Jinolangu ni Emmanuel Terer. Kutokana na utafiti ambao umeufanya na takwima ambazo umetaja, inafurahisha kuona small scale wana asilimi ambayo inafurahisha kulisha taifa la Kenya mm -hmm. na naamini kwamba wakati unaeleza hivyo kuna swala ambalo linajitokeza umetaja mm -hmm. vizuri sana kwamba hapa katika Kenya's Gold yes. nafasi yule mtu ambaye yuko nyumbani kufahamu zaidi kwa sababu hapa anaposema kila siku ni darasani kalamu karatasi andika tekeleza baadaye ili nawe tu kutegemea kama taifa la Kenya jina langu ni Emmanuel Terer na naamini kwamba wewe umeketi kitako taratibu ili usikilize kwa sababu tutakufunza kweli kweli. All right, now moving to the agenda of the day. I know you're wondering what is happening in the background. Now, the last couple of Thursdays, we have been on a mission of learning so much when it comes to cotton and its entire value chain, as well as the integral role that is played by the cooperative societies. But as from today, we'll be embarking on an absolutely interesting journey of potato farming in Kenya. Do you like Waruz? You know Gen Z when it's a cash crop in Yandarwa? If you listen to Abenton music, tell me, what do you like about potato? Kwa Swahili, tunaita mbatata. Right. Uyo ni viazi. Lakini ukisema mbatata, watasema ni ugonjwa flani. Leke kusema kweli mbatata ni jina la rasmi la kiswahili kwa viazi. Mimi, ukifanya hile, tunaita kumash. Mashed potatoes. Ndo inanifuraisha sana. Lakini, na vohona hapa, ni kalili ya kufuraisha. Inameremeta kweli kweli. Right. And you have a display right here on the table. Na, na namini kwamba kwa mtu ambaye anafikiria, viazi ni kama kawaida. Unakumbuka wakati tukua dogo. Mm -hmm. Unaingiza ndani ya jivu mm -hmm. na ile jivu iwe na moto bila shaka subiri ikauke kula. Unasikia oh. Right. Kama kawaida na kuchoma kweli kweli. Right. Good old memories. Now if there's one crop that is very versatile and can be eaten in absolutely many different ways then it has to be a potato. Now right here on our table courtesy of Chef's Table we do have a display. We do have raw potatoes where we start from right in the farm. And then right here we do have what we are calling viazi karai, mm -hmm. you know, with its sauce. And then here at the front we have what we are calling the potato two rings as well then right here you could assume this is meat but it's not meat this is potato kebab then right here for the salad lovers we do have potato salad and right here we do have packed potatoes and here it goes on and on we have potato cups and finally on my far right we do have potato pita bread mm -hmm. now these are the different ways and how you can consume potato now according Kabla to uh, okay. Kuna mm -hmm. vile unaona kuku hapa yes accompaniment eh, sasa hii mm. ukila viazi unaunganisha yes. taratibu kamelesha mnofu na mwafua yes. na anaamini kwamba mate yako yatadondoka kwa kweli absolutely true that is the accompaniment that you can have when you're having different meals made out of potato now according to data from KNBS which is the Ken Kenya National Bureau of Statistics potato was grown by about 1,170,169 farmers in 2022 and 70% 
of the rural population depend on potato farming as their main source of income. Mm. And 40% of the total population of Kenya depends on potato farming as their source of income. So today we want to start from the very beginning, the beginning being seeds. Where do you get your seeds? What makes a seed a quality seed? So all those answers will be answered in our goal feature coming right up. Take a look. So we do have some statistics on the screen running right now as we wait for the feature which will be playing shortly that will show you a lot more on quality seeds. We will be doing a breakdown of potato farming in Kenya. And before we get to the feature, allow me to take you through some figures just to help you understand how lucrative potato farming is. Now, for example, you have like one acre of land and you're wondering how much seeds will I need for my acre? You're going to need about 16 bags of seeds. And here we're talking about grade one, quality seeds for growing your potato. So a bag, a bag being 50 kg, is going to go for 4,000 200 so in your acre of land if you do a proper mathematics of the bags of seeds that you need and how much each seeds cost then you're going to require 67,200 for seeds in your one acre of land now if we move to the next slide it's going to show us the input that we need in our farm maybe you can take us through to the next slide all right, now here we are going to focus on what you really need as a farmer when you're talking about inputs. So we have seeds and we have done the mathematics of that in the previous slide. We do have a pest control. You have to make sure that you take care of your crops as they grow. We are talking about labor as well. You'll need people to help you plow the land. You'll need people to help you in harvesting. We are talking about fertilizer, which is very crucial when it comes to husbandry or whatever crop that you're in. And right now we are talking about potatoes of course and then just in case you're leasing land we also have figures that we put in for that so if we put rough estimates of how much you need a total of what that will cost in your one acre we are talking about a total of a hundred and ten thousand this is inclusive of your seeds pest control labor fertilizer and list land now we want to see what the returns will be like so here we are talking about half after four months you have taken care of your crops you have done what you need to do when it comes to irrigation when it comes to pest control when it comes to weeding so in your one acre of land remembering that you did use 16 bags of seeds when it's time to harvest having done everything that is required during the husbandry you are going to get about 200 bags and from conversations with farmers we are talking about 200 at the very minimum and a bag here we are talking about about 50 kg all right now the bag market price of course fluctuates depending on demand so on a very bad day we could have your bag going for about 3,000 so if we do the mathematics of you who did all the right things in your farm you have 200 bags of 50 kg potatoes and you're selling them at 3,000 you do have a total of 600,000 so when you come to talk about profit you do remember we had what we needed for input, what we bought when it comes to seeds, what, it, what we bought when it comes to fertilizer, and your returns after harvest 600,000. When you do the subtraction, you get about 490,000 Kenya shillings. So as you can see, potato farming is most definitely a lucrative business, and we will be taking you through that and a lot more. But before you get this profit, before you get these returns, you have to get it absolutely correct in the farm. And getting it right in the farm starts by you getting the very right seeds. So how do the seeds look like? What is the quality of a proper seed? And where do you get this proper seed? Find out about that and a lot more in our gold feature coming right up. Take a look. So 
So we are on a mission to learn so much about potato farming in Kenya, being that it's one of the most lucrative business and also potato is the second most important crop after maize. Now one of the major challenges that is facing this sector is the fact that sometimes there is a shortage of quality seeds and when the seeds are there, they're very expensive for farmers to afford them. Now we need to find a solution to this problem because the projection is the demand for potatoes is on a steadfast rise because of urbanization. Now to learn so much about the seeds, which is the very first step in the farm, we came all the way to Agrico PSA, who are the biggest potato seed propagators in East Africa. So come along with me, let us meet the experts of the day who will take us through the process of growing all the way till ready for the market so that our farmers can get quality seeds. Come, let's go. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much. Of Ka course, we're so happy to be here. Karibu sana. Thank you so, so much. Uh, hopefully, kuna baridi. Oh, I have to wear this. Yeah. This is where you do the business as agrico. Yes, up and you panda so that uh, we get, uh, okay, we do seed multiplication here so that uh, each and every farmer gets, regardless of where you are, mm -hmm. you get qualified, certified seeds. seeds. Yeah. How many acres of land and a potato here at Agrico? We currently alternate from uh, around 400 to 600 acres. Half of it is uh, rain fed and half of it uh, is under irrigation so that we make sure that farmers are getting certified seeds throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Because if uh, we really depend on, on rain fed, rain. we realize that there are some seasons there are no rains mm -hmm. and therefore we'll be having a shortage of, uh, shortage of seeds. The demand for certified seeds in the country mm -hmm. is so high. Right. And uh, we are not in a position even to meet even even two percent or three percent, right? Regardless of who we are, even uh, even other seed merchants who are also doing seed uh, mm -hmm. certifications like we, mm -hmm. we are not in a position to to get above two or three percent right. in the whole country. So that means we have to import a lot of Ye potato yes. seeds and also yes. potatoes in general. Yes. Right. Yeah, and that's what we surely do. We import. We get from from uh, from Netherlands. Mm -hmm. We do the bulking here. Mm -hmm. uh, we do the seed multiplication here. Mm -hmm. um, in Kenya, we have uh, mainly around five counties that are doing uh, potatoes, but other counties are upcoming. We have Nakuru is doing very well. We have Nyandarwa doing very well. We have uh, Meru doing also very well. We have uh, Narok. And uh, I think the most, the reading one apart from Nyandarwa is uh, Sergio Marakwet. Great. Yep. So now I want to get into the business of potato of farming, okay. what are the essentials that I need to look out for? And I'm talking in terms of what is the best climate? What should the soils look at, now, look like? Take us through that. Now, as a farmer, the most important thing is, is having the land itself. Mm -hmm. Once you have the land, it's for you as a farmer to determine whether the land is okay for doing potatoes or not. And how do you understand that? You must do something called soil analysis so that you understand the content of the the content of your soil. Is it, is, it, is it okay for you to do the potato farming? Then once you are done with the, with the soil analysis, is sourcing the certified seed. Because we as agricole, or I as an expert of uh, potatoes, we usually advise farmers, mm -hmm. don't just plant potatoes, plant certified potatoes. Because potatoes is business. Once you get the certified seeds, mm -hmm. the next step which is very important is land preparation. I mean, the seed bed to receive the planting materials, mm -hmm. those are the, the, the potato seeds, it should have at least 20 to 30% soil depth so that you can have enough soil to make sure that your, your potatoes are bulking very well. Once you achieve that, the other thing is uh, you must understand where you are sourcing your fertilizers because now, Potato is not just like any other crop. Mm -hmm. We have uh, special people there who are making very nice fertilizers for, for the potatoes. And apart from that, you must also understand where you are sourcing your crop protection uh, chemicals. Mm -hmm. Because again, without that, there's nothing much you can do. Right. Apart from that, another factor that you should consider as a mm -hmm. farmer is the market. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's the final thing. Right. Once you understand all that, then you're good to you're go. You're good to go. Yes. Describe for us the type of soil and also the favorable climate for potatoes to grow well. Potato, around around 75% of the potato is water. And therefore, regardless of what you do, you must make sure that the climate is receiving uh, enough rainfall right. if you are not under irrigation. Mm -hmm. Then the type of soil sometimes does not matter. Mm -hmm. What matters is, do you have enough nutrients to make sure that the crop is, is growing? Mm -hmm. Long time ago, people were not doing potatoes. But as you can see, 
where we are, the project is doing very well because mm -hmm. now we have mastered the art of planting. So mm -hmm. the most important thing is water and the nutrients. Right. Yep. She can take us through the varieties that you grow right here at Agrico. We have so many varieties, but mm -hmm. for now we are only doing, uh, currently we are doing, uh, we are doing three varieties. Mm -hmm. One is called uh, Makis. Mm -hmm. Makis is a very nice variety for processing, for crisps and, uh, and chips. Apart from that, we're also doing another one called Manitou. Mm -hmm. Manitou is a home-based uh, variety. It, is, uh, it has a red skin. So um, when you say home-based, this is where we're talking our stew, yeah, our mashed mm, potatoes. Exactly. Right. The third one is called Arizona. Mm -hmm. Arizona also falls suit to Manitou. Money too. It's it's also open for for Marikiti market or open air market. Right. But Makis is strictly for processing. Like the chips now. Yeah. Right. And the main reason why we have the three varieties. Mm. Uh, is simply because uh, of the market demand. Right. Because out there, there are other varieties. We have Shange, we mm -hmm. have Sherekea, we have yeah. Wanjiko. What is commonly grown by farmers out there? Uh, majority of our farmers As are... As you do, maybe start planting. Our, majority of our farmers usually do, do Shange. Mm -hmm. Because Shange is, uh, it's, it is open. It is, it is open. But so you, is also Shange good for home-based? Yes, or very nice. Is it also nice for processing? Not really. All right. So because, home based. Because of uh, it, it doesn't have enough. Uh, okay, it doesn't have a good dry matter content. And when you talk about dry matter content, na jua pumongea ka expert. Kuna mtu nyumbanya na shinda sasa dry matter content kwa viazi ni gani? To kisama dry matter content mm. is um is the amount of water in that viazi. If if maybe for example you take like maybe a hundred gram tuber of shangi and a hundred gram tuber of makis, mm. then you mash or try to extract to extract the amount of water in it. You realize mm. that maybe shangi has has more water than maki. Maki. Yes. Right. And yeah. that's what makes maki good for processing. Yeah. It makes it very good for processing. Apart right. from apart from that, uh, maki has a, a very high uh, dormancy. So at a ya kinunua the processor, a kinunua kiweka ka store when the when the when the viazi are in season is in a position to store that viazi for for long time, mm -hmm. maybe three months up to four months. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're calling high dormancy? Yes. Right. High may yaraka. Right. Apart from that, it has very sharp eyes. Mm -hmm. So ule mnunuzi ama the processor, when uh, akito angozi, you realize that it has a rest wastage compared to other varieties. Great. Yes. So now we're here. We've understood the basics, what I need to look out for as a farmer. Yeah. So now we want to grow and plant we want to potato. We want to plant. Maki variety is what you're going to be doing today, right? Yes. So step one, and you're going to teach me. I'm going to teach you. Mm -hmm. I think we have talked about uh, the soil depth. Yes. I have told you it should be between 20 and uh, 30 centimeters depth. Right. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, as a farmer, mm -hmm. there's something else you, you should also try to maintain. Plant population on a shamba. Because if you don't do that again at the end of the day you won't have enough yield i'll show you some sim how simple, to do that simple simple all right yeah. so this yep. is our space yes this so number one tool ni jembe number one tool ni, ni jembe right because you realize that uh, majority over over 99 percent of our farmers are usually use jembe mm -hmm. few wouldn't you want to me is or planters and so forth and so forth mm -hmm. so top so ni kuchimba yeah like that yes am well, i doing the right thing madam gina what you are doing is uh, it is wrong no way <laughs> so what do I need to do? Yeah, maybe I can des I can demonstrate to you. So mm -hmm. what what you're going to do? Mm -hmm. I'm uh, I'm assuming this is now your your piece of land. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, this is your bacon on maybe on the farthest end of mm -hmm. your shamba, mm -hmm. and this is the other the other bacon on on the on the rubber side of the of the shamba. Mm -hmm. You must make sure that the jembe ina ingia karibu karibu your table, mm -hmm. so so that you you have enough uh, depth. In, Enough depth. All right. Yes. So ni ingize jembe yangu dani? Yes. Evo. Yes. Like that? Rima tu kabisa, make sure imeshikana yote. Imeshikana, 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 and both sides maybe you can turn. Also have these soils. Yeah, like that. Whatever you're doing is right. That one is okay. That's okay? Yeah. So now, I'm assuming that now, Madam Gena, yes. this is your land, you are one acre. Right. So what you do, you now you come with your with your fertilizer. Right. And when you come with your fertilizer, mm -hmm. there is a new method we we are trying to to embrace. Mm -hmm. And remember, I told you 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 had done soil analysis. Mm -hmm. So soil analysis will be to guide you which type of fertilizer to use, and the amount in terms of nutrients. Nutrients. So now I'm assuming that shambayako umemariza. What you do, mm -hmm. you just come with the with fertilizer mm -hmm. like this one. Mm -hmm. And what you do, mm -hmm. you just broadcast. Viazi really require of potassium. 
right. in, inahitaji potassium ya kutosha, inahitaji boron ya kutosha and uh, enough calcium. Can a farmer go organic on potato farming? Yes, but first of all you must and you must understand what is the content of either the the manure unatumia ama right. ama ile 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 kitu unatumia iko na nini. All right. Because regardless of what you try to do, lazima viazi ipate the actual nutrients, nutrients that it needs. It needs right. whether organic or inorganic. Right. Is that enough? That one is enough what for now. What do you now. do to make sure that you're not putting excess fertilizer? Okay, now, here what we usually do, we train somebody so that we can have a uniform spreading of that fertilizer kwa shamba yako. Maybe, Great. for example, okay, majority of farmers usually use two bags of fertilizer kwa, kwa shamba. Iyo ni shamba ya kiasi gani? Eka. One acre. One acre, two yeah. bags of fertilizer. Yeah, two bags of fertilizer. Na yo bag moja kona kilo? 50 kilos. Great. So, uh, approximately 100 kilos. Right. So, apart from that now, what you do, mm -hmm. you just come with your jembe, make very shallow, very shallow lines. Kama, kama uto tonye na tengeneza. Mm -hmm. And from, from kalain to the other kalain, mm -hmm. you should space with at least 75 centimeters. From this line to this one? Yeah. All and, right. and mind me, I'm making a very shallow, shallow. line. Nisi yake jembe mzima? Apana. Kama ili ya kwanza? Eh, so right. uneza tengeneza Let's yako. Let's try and yeah. see if we'll get it correct. 75 centimeters here? Approximately there. Apo? Yeah. Right. Yep. Am I making sense? Yeah, you are making sense, although you are Caribbean sana. Oh, you are Caribbean sana? Yeah, maybe you can uh, go maybe. Nita Rudi Nyuma, we have to get it Apo. correct. Maybe, Hapa. yeah. Great. Yep. Apo. Okay, kidogo, kidogo, Ivo. Like that, like that, like that. Right. Then from there now you come with your... Seed. With your seed. This is great. And now, as you can see on my hand, mm. I think we have two types of seed. Mm. This could be, this is seed size one, and this one is large to be seed size two. Right. So for today, we are planting a seed size one. Right. Now, pressing, you must space 30 centimeters apart. Right. On that low. Mm. So interlows should be 75, intercrop should be 30 centimeters. 30. Okay. Yep. So, im guyako. Unaweka na utaju, utaniuliza, tutenda tukipima kila pari ya pana, mm -hmm. unaweka, mm -hmm. kanyaga hapa na mgu. Ivi? Yes, hapo tu mbele yake. Like this? Yes. Okay. Unaweka yu ingine oh, hapo. Oh, ini 30? Yes. Ilale tu siyo? Yep, like Great. that. Ha, weka ingine hapo, shika this one. Kanyaga, uweka. Yeah. So that's what you do from line mwanzo huko. Had him wish the other So, Neza Kakoi Rapilis. Neza Kakoi Rapilis. Yes. Yes. Naya Musha. And the last one, right? Yes. yes. Like that. Good. Yes. 30 centimeters, 75. Yes. So, Good. 30, 30, 75. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, what you do? You have to raise the soil. Unakata, im changa katikati, you raise kwa iviazi. Ingine ifunike. Ifunike the other side. Okay, yes. I'll need your guidance on that, so but let's of, try. Hapa yeah. katikati yes, zindo? Yes, but now you go as deep as jembe kani ingia uko. Oh, even. And now you raise, cover. Yeah, you, you raise the soils. This way? Yes. Like yes. that? Yes. Oh, okay. That but, way. But not now, that way. Piga tu kawida ni kama tu unarima. Oh, kana lima. Eh. Nikifanya hivi tutalala uhu? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Na pande ingine. All right. Yes. Like that. Pole. Then one more. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. watcha ni, watcha ni ku... Unifunikia sasa? Ni, ni kufunikia. Ufinish umalo? Yeah. As, mm. as you can see what I'm trying to do here, mm. I'm trying to mix that um, changa and, uh, and the fertilizer. Yeah. So are we together? Yeah, so the rains know. have come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Anisha, our, yes. our crops will grow vizuri. Yeah, yes, it so vizuri. after this... So, so now, now at this point now, mm. it's a new method of, uh, of planting, mm -hmm. whereby your crop will grow on this mold. You won't have wastage of water, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, especially those people when you wanafanya kwenye kuna mbo ya kutasha, mm -hmm. this mold will be in a position to, to store enough water. Right. Ataku kikauka, hii mold itakuwa na mchanga ya kutasha. Great. Then during harvesting, ni kubomo atu him changa na kuoko traviazi. Before tende kuku harvest, let's talk about control the husbandry, pest control, weed management. How does that work in a potato farm? Okay, now, uh, with that, with that the technology mm -hmm. nowadays we have very nice uh, selective herbicides out there mm -hmm. that will be in a position kutoa kumariza kwekwe na inawacha viazi yako ikiwa intact, as you can see on 
on this shamba yetu mm -hmm. then viazi if it had really sprouted well or it had broken the dormancy viazi will we start emerging from day, day 10 kutoka kwa mchanga then or day 21 those are three weeks down the line mm -hmm. 100% germination will have occurred mm -hmm. then from there what you're supposed to do you start now applying fungicide to control bright because bright is the main essence in the mariza wa kuruma wengi in the country at what point do you start applying the fungicide when the crop has 100% germination right. that is between day 21 and day 30 all right so approximately a month after planting mm. and uh, what i mean after planting uripanda na ikapata maji because kama umepanda na haijapata maji ina maanisha itaka docile pale mpaka ile time itapata maji ndio ime so for example if it wasn't as rainy as it is right now uh -huh. um if you've planted are you supposed to know what it immediately after yes you you can if you under irrigation mm -hmm. but don't overwater because viazi ina require uh, moisture ndio ime but not the soil should not be wet because right. if you are wet viazi yako itakuwa na tendency ya ya kuoza right and we have seen majority of farm, okay not majority but some of the farmers mm. wanakuwa na hiyo shida mm. wameweka viazi wanaweka maji mingi mm -hmm. then you realize that another the day kuna kuwa na unevenness ya germination one crop here the other one there so you won't have like a 100% germination right so don't yes. overwater don't overwater irrigation don't overwater right. until your crop germinates mm -hmm. yes and now in the season like now when mm -hmm. we're experiencing floods in farms yeah. how can potato farmers protect themselves because you said the potatoes don't want to be flooded what's the way forward and what are the challenges you're going to face during this period when there's floods okay at this at this at this point mm. you realize that uh, majority of farmers mm. they are really experiencing reaching of fertilizers zile fertilizers walikuwa wameweka inakuwa washed off by 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 via, i mean by water, water. by flooding water mm -hmm. the surface runoff in a in a, in a washed fertilizer mm. so we usually now advise farmers to mm. keep on replenishing their soils right when a cattle are kiongeza ongeza fertilizer kidogo kidogo right. until the condition stabilizes right apart from that mm. it is uh, it is mkurima ni juu ya mkurima kuhakikisha that shamba yake iko na drainage ya kutosha because viazi has hitaji maji na kuja ku flood kwa shamba iki flood kwa shamba you are going to experience more problems stagnation of your crop haitakoma vizuri and of the day asara inakuwa kubwa kwa right. kwa mkurima so when we take care mm -hmm. of the husbandry correctly yeah. pest control with management fertilizer kwa sawa maji kwa sawa we want to see how we harvest and okay. how it's going to look like so can we see that yeah we can do right, that right let's do it okay about harvesting and the machinery involved in harvesting for us i think we advantage that we have a machine for we, we have a potato harvester but uh, you realize that uh, majority of farmers out there they don't have uh, uh, potato harvesters they they just harvest the normal way using a jembe using a a, a fork jembe to some uh, some some use sticks uh, some use uh, f uh, spades mm -hmm. to 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 uprift the the crop from i mean the tubers from from the soil mm -hmm. and remember the method i showed you for for, for planting mm -hmm. that one is a very good method simply because you realize that mm -hmm. you you just lower the soil from that mold and you're in a position to to correct your 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 vias or, or your tubers right. and with that method you realize that majority of farmers they really appreciate it because it lowers the post uh, post harvest damages mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. of your vias great yes and after harvested am i able to grow potatoes the following week the same day or should i give it some time no you should give it sometimes uh, and that's where now the issues of uh, crop rotations are right. comes in right. whereby we, you you must uh, you must rotate right. once you do the 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 viazi mm -hmm. the viazi is in the soranasi family now you you can do a grass family right. which you can either plant wheat upande mahindi right. or mahindi thing else then uh, from there you need a panda family of cabbage ama skuma ama 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 carrots then from there then now the third or the fourth season now you can come back to and potatoes. do and do potatoes but Great. because if you keep on doing potatoes year in year out you realize that uh, disease pressure inaanza kuwa juu mm -hmm. pest pressure inaanza kuwa juu by the time you are going maybe the third or the fourth year you cannot get the maximum yield out Great. of your farm right, yeah. thank you so much now i think we can go to the processing unit